Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Unify Protect G4 Dome Camera. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon store and I'll put it in the description below. So like always, let's see what comes in the box for the Unify Protect G4 Dome Camera. So this is everything that comes in the box with the G4 Dome Camera. Firstly, we have the G4 Dome Camera and we could look on the bottom and here we have a reset button and then we have a grommet which we could pull out. And under the grommet, we have our RJ45, which will be powering this camera by PoE. For getting an angle with this camera, you could turn the camera left and right, and we could also take the lens off. You could see that there's a lock sticker on the top. To get that off, we just turn it left and then pull it up. And now we can move the camera up and down. We're gonna wanna make sure that we clean the lens after we put it back on. The G4 Dome camera has a vandal proof case. It comes with a mounting template that has a level on it. It comes with the mount if we're gonna be mounting this to drop ceiling, as well as a mount if we're gonna be putting it on drywall or brick. Comes with our screws and anchors, and then also a release key for getting it off this mount. Let's go back to the computer and go over some of the specs. Now that we've seen what comes in the box, let's go over some of the specs. So the G4 Dome camera is a four megapixel, 24 frames per second. If we put it into high frame rate mode, we would get 48 frames per second. It has day and night infrared LEDs. It's IPX4 weatherproof enclosure. And let's take a look at what that means. So IPX4 protects from splashing water, no matter the direction. It has a built-in microphone and speaker and it's powered with power over ethernet. It's controlled by the Unify Protect software and it's IK08 vandal resistant. And what does that mean? IK8 protect against five joule impact, equivalent to impact of 1.7 kilogram mass dropped from 30 millimeters above impact surface. And this camera is $229 MSRP Canadian. So I'm gonna go ahead, get my GoPro, we'll get this set up, and then we'll get it adopted into our controller. All right, so currently we have a G3 Flex up here. This is where we're gonna put the G4 Dome. I'm gonna time lapse this as it's a little windy out, um, but you guys will see me doing the install. Now the G4 dome is up, we need to get it adopted into Protect and we'll go over some of the settings. All right, now we have our G4 dome mounted. Let's go ahead and get it adopted into our Protect. So I'll go into my Protect controller and then we're gonna go over to Devices. I'm gonna go to Add Device. I'll call it G4 dome front door. And then we'll press Add Device. Now the G4 dome is updating. The G4 dome camera has done updating, we could see it now adopted into our Protect controller. One thing that stands out to me right now, it's only showing 100 megabits per second. This does have a gigabit connection. This could be a bad cable, but the camera is up and working, so let's go over some of the settings. So if I click on the play icon, we could bring up the G4 dome camera. And here I don't have my angle perfect, but this is where it's gonna stay right now for the purposes of this video, and then I'll change it later on. This is showing it in auto 720p, and then we could change it to four megapixel. And it's a better picture by far. We could see under about that it's showing us the name of the camera, which I've set to G4 dome front door. It has the camera status, which is connected. It has the camera model, which is the G4 Dome, and then it has the firmware version. It's also showing us how many frames per second it's running, as well as the bitrate. 
under host, it's showing us our IP address and then it's showing us our MAC address. We could see by the link state that it's only running in 100 megabits per second. We could see the uptime being 42 minutes and the connected time being 36 minutes. And we could see the last motion is seven minutes ago from the recording of this video. We could click over on general and here this is where we could change the name of the camera if we'd like. We could change the sensitivity of the microphone. They have a status sound toggle switch as well as a status light. We have an adjust camera picture setting which we'll take a look at in a moment. And then we have our overlay information. So for the overlay information we could display the time on the camera, the camera name, the Unify logo which I could turn off, and we could specify if we want to see the bitrate. If we click on recordings, it's going to say when to record. I have all my recordings set to record 24 hours, 7 days a week. But you could set it to record never, on motion events, or just on smart detections. Whether it be smart person detection or smart vehicle detection. Next, we could take a look at the recording quality. And here we could set it to high frame rate mode. If we turn this toggle switch on, it will go from 24 frames per second to 48. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in front of the camera right now when it's on 24 frames per second and wave my hand and then I'm going to come back and we're going to turn on high frame rate mode and I'll go back down to the camera and wave my hand and see if we notice any difference with the frames per second. This video capture will be for 24 frames per second without the high frame rate mode on so let's take a look. And the camera overall looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn the high frame rate on and see if we can see a difference. To turn the high frame rate mode on, we need to go to the recording quality and then we just click on this toggle switch. As you can see, it's switched to 48 frames per second. I'm gonna go back to the camera and wave my arms a few more times. And here is when we have our high frame rate mode turned on where it's at 48 frames per second. It doesn't look a whole lot different. It is a little bit smoother, but other than that, I can't tell too much of a difference. Now going back to the recording features of this camera, we could still look at the recording quality. If you want to save disk space, you would want to turn down your frame rate as well as the image quality, which would be your bit rate. We take a look at our motion events. And here you could view motion detection that occurs throughout the day. Select the motion and footage to include in these events below. So minimum seconds of motion to trigger event, seconds to record before motion, and seconds to record after motion. There's two different motion algorithms. There's enhanced and then there's stable. I'm going to leave it on enhanced. And then we have our smart detection. And here you could toggle on or off if you want smart detection. Smart detection is only available on the G4 series of cameras. It does not work on the G3 series. So I'm going to leave both on so that I have person detection as well as vehicle detection. We could go and look at our zones. And here we could add a motion zone. And by default, everything in purple, that would be a motion zone. I could set this down a little lower as I don't really care for this top brick or the bottom brick being covered. But everywhere in between this purple area would be captured in an event. And then I'll press save. We could look at smart detection zones as well and we could add a smart detection zone. Here by default, it has both person and vehicle detection covering everywhere. If we want, we could just select person. I'm going to eliminate the vehicle. And then I'm going to set my zone to be a little lower. So that it covers only my front door in my front driveway. And now we have that person smart detection zone created. We could press save. And then we could add a new zone for vehicles so that we, it would pick up a vehicle if it's coming down the road. So I'm going to add a new zone and we're just going to have it for vehicle detection. I'm going to place the zone over the road. So we'll just drag up to the top corner to the road and bring up the bottom. Just so we have the road covered and we'll cover up to this part as well. So now anytime a car comes down the road, it's going to pick up and detect and we'll press save. 
We could also add a privacy zone. So I'll click on add privacy zone. And if I would never want this camera to record in an area, we would add a privacy zone. So I don't want my neighbor's area to be covered. So I'm gonna add a new zone and I'm gonna drag the zone up to everywhere that's not on my own property. And then I'll press save and this will never record this area. And now if we look at the camera, that privacy zone is completely blacked out. We could go to manage and here we could reboot our camera. We could unmanage the camera totally, delete from our protect controller. We could look at our RTSP streams and we could also disable the microphone. Now let's look at the settings of the camera. I'm gonna click the settings wheel and here we could click on the microphone. That's just to turn the microphone sensitivity up or down. We could look at the brightness and we could adjust it to our likings. We could adjust the contrast, the hue, the saturation, the sharpness, the denoise, the AE mode, so the auto exposure mode. We could change the orientation of the camera, so we could auto rotate it. The camera is mounted upside down, so we're gonna wanna auto rotate it back and it will bring it up the right way. We could look at our infrared, and the infrared right now is on auto. And there's a couple different options we have for this. So we have auto filter only, no LEDs. We have it always enabled or we have it always disabled. Also, we could select the sensitivity of the infrared. Right now it's on low, we could have it at medium or high. Once it's dark out, we'll check out the infrared. And then our last option is WDR, which is wide dynamic range. This will balance varying lightings within the camera's capture. So you could turn that up or down if you'd like. So another thing that we could do, we could go under our events and then we could select smart detections. Here we could filter out which camera we wanna see and I just have the G4 dome camera selected. And this will show us our smart detection. So right here it's saying that a person was detected and this is me coming out and waving my hand and we'll see a blue box around it. And you could turn off the highlight smart detection if you want and that would just take away the blue box. We could also take a look at a vehicle and in the right hand corner it will put a red box around it. If we go to our dashboard we could see motion events and we could select which camera we want to look at. So if we go to the G4 dome front door camera we could see all the motion events that happened within this day. We could select one of the motion events which is just me waving my arm and we could play. Here we could highlight the motion area and this is gonna show us the area where the motion was captured. So the last thing to look at is the night vision and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts on this camera. All right, now it's nighttime out. Let's check out the infrared on the G4 dome camera. So as we could see right now, the infrared is reflecting off of the lens case that it comes with. It's just a piece of clear plastic and it's giving us a very bad picture. Really, it would be hard to see anybody walking up to your step. You may get their head, that's about it. Let's go ahead and turn the infrared off and see how it looks. My street is fairly bright, so we may get a good picture. So I'm gonna go to general and then I'm gonna adjust the picture. And then here we're gonna go to infrared. Instead of it being on auto, I'm gonna turn the infrared off. So we're gonna always disable. And we can now see most of the front step. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna grab my ladder and I'm gonna take off the casing and see if the infrared works any better without it on. And this is with the lens casing off of the G4 dome. Right here, this is the case that comes on the G4 dome lens. And as you can see right here, the infrared is reflecting off the wall. That's probably just where I have it positioned. It's very close to the corner of my front door and there's brick right beside it. The picture does look better without the dome off. I'm gonna go there, I'll wave, I'll put the casing back on and see if we get different results. All right, now let's take a look of me waving at the G4 dome camera without the lens cover put on. And it doesn't look too bad. The infrared, yes, is bright against my wall, but you could clearly see my face. One other thing to test out is the audio quality on here. I just said test one, two, three, four, and you guys will be able to hear that. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the audio quality on it isn't too bad either. Now let's see what it looks like with the cover put back on and me waving at it. 
And here we could see me waving at it with the cover put back on. And it does seem a little foggy. I did clean the cover before I put it back on. Like I said, this could be because where I have the camera positioned. So my final thoughts on this camera, would I recommend it to other people? I most likely would. The day vision is very nice. The audio quality isn't too bad. The one disappointing feature obviously is the night vision when the lens dome is put on. I think this camera would really do well in an office setting on a drop ceiling and I don't think you would have these infrared issues. That being said, I still would probably pick a G4 Bullet or a G4 Pro camera over this one. If you guys have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.